Good day, it's Tony Fortunato from The Technology Firm. Today we're gonna to run through a multi-trace analysis. And we have a client here on the left, and we have a server here on the right. And it's using HTTP, so it's a web server. And we're trying to document performance problems. Now they're both on the same VLAN, and they're both on the same subnet, and they're both on the same switch. So this is as simple as life can get. I know you'll never see this in the real world, but this is good to know because now we can prove and disprove things a little bit easier. First thing we're going to do is clean up our screen. We don't need this middle pane here called the packet detail and we don't need this called the packet bytes. So let's get rid of these four panes. View, packet details, view, packet bytes, view, packet details, and view, packet bytes. So one thing that um, people are, sometimes you're not even familiar with this little tip and trick, is that if you do have these files in your um, just in your Explorer and you just double click on the file it'll open it up in, in Wireshark and in the previous version of Wireshark you can actually highlight both of them and press enter and they would both open with the previous with the current excuse me the current version that's a bit of a problem that would basically hang you up so don't do that so open them separately and you'll have them side by side second thing we need to uh, further filter the trace file. Now the client was filtering on the IP of the server and the server was filtered on the IP of the client and both traces were taken from the client and from the server. Again, the best possible scenario you could ever get. So how are you going to find the same packets? Well, let's go to statistics and conversations because they're having a conversation. We are going to bring up this TCP tab and sort by bytes. And you can see there's 15 megabytes. So right click apply as filter selected both ways now we have a display filter and our output now because this is all on the same switch and the addressing is not changing we can just copy this filter bring it over here paste the same filter and hit enter there you go so now we have the same trace on both sides you can see here on the left one it's the 332 packets so this is started a little bit earlier and the server will start a little bit later right so don't be too concerned about that yet. The second thing we're going to do is just resize uh, the columns. And that's this little icon over here. So you can resize them and resize this. And that just kind of basically gives you a little bit of screen real estate back. Now we need to find out where the file is that we're downloading. And it's a little bit obvious because it says right here, get 15 MB, get 15 MB. But don't go there yet. Let's back up and actually do a proper baseline. There's a sin synac and there's a sin synac. And it's the same one on both sides and both of them are less than a millisecond so that's showing you that things are pretty fast please do not say the answer is zero because that is literally impossible so it's less than one millisecond that's how you say that then we can see the get and we see a get and we see our response 27 milliseconds and 27 milliseconds the exact same time on both sides so we know that the network is super fast less than one millisecond again so this is proving to us that the network is working fairly quickly because if we had it leave the server at 27 and arrive at the client at 37 well then the network transit time would be 10 milliseconds and that's not the case so this is super fast now we'll go all the way down to get we'll go to get and we can see our very first packet comes back at 16 and 16 now a little something about Wireshark um, the way it works out of the box is this response is not given to you till the very last packet. So up here you can see get and you see the response OK. But this is the second of these two packets. So what you might want to do sometimes, and we'll do it right now just to show you something. View, I'm going to bring back those details. I'm going to right click on the HTTP and I'm going to go to the protocol preferences and watch this. I'm going to uncheck this first thing. And when you do that, you can see there's the get, and there it is. It's decoding it at the first packet, and it's showing you there as opposed to the last packet. So that's something you might want to consider every once in a while when you troubleshoot, is flipping that back and forth. Uh, there's a whole other topic behind this, but that's good enough for now. So you can see, it says get, and there's the response. And again, that's 16 milliseconds, and that's the same thing here, 16 milliseconds. Now here's the key. The SIN Synax were coming back super fast. So you know the network is fast, we've proven that. You know the PC is fast, you know the server is fast. But when we got to the actual application layer, HTTP, things got slower. You see that? And this can be caused by one of two things. Either the server is having a problem, it's overloaded, or the drive, the disk, is extremely busy. 
and you'll get the same response. But what we're doing here is we're not too concerned about the answer, we're concerned about documenting the problem. As you can see, the problem is fairly uh, prevalent, and there's it, it happens all the time, right? Get, and there's my response, 27. Get, there's my response, and that's only 7. Get, and there's my response, and that's 16. And this is, again, on the same network. This should be super, super, super fast. So there you go. That's how you start documenting and looking through a trace file when you have two trace files and you want to prove something is slow. Have a good day. Bye for now. Thank you.